Hello and welcome. We'll be looking at QLab and AppleScript today. In the past, I've mentioned my most reused piece of code and my most used hotkey. Today, we're going to be looking at my biggest time saver. So let's jump into QLab and see what that, how that works. So this queue is called Create Slideshow. Um, this queue is very similar to the to the Make New Slide and Make New Video slide, uh, scripts from previous videos. So we're going to just demo this in QLab go through how the code is different, and then demo the new version. We're not going to be doing as an extensive recode walkthrough like we normally do. Um, again, it's, it's very similar. Uh, I'll be explaining the things that are different, but, but if you want to see how the recoding works, I recommend checking out either Make New Slide or Make New Video. So uh, we have this, this slide called Create Slideshow. I'm sorry, we have the script called Create Slideshow, and the way it works is you select a range, a group of slides. These need to be stills, not videos. And then you just run the hotkey with Control S. Uh, you see we get a little pop up that says, How long do you want in between slides? I'm just going to say four for now for, for demonstration. And we see we get pre populated. We get a three count uh, default fade time, because that's what my templates are set to um, down in the settings, the, the queue settings. And then they're all automatically set to auto continue. Um, the fade and stops have is it the fade and, yes the fade and stops have a four second delay so that we will hold on each each slide for a couple seconds before we move on. Um, in this in this demo, it's only going to be one second. And then at the very end, we have a a start queue that will loop us back, making this a looping start show. I'm going to pull up an audition window real quick. Let me bring this over where you can see it, and we'll go ahead and uh, run this. And you'll see they, they just crossfade. Uh, it's going to take 12 seconds total. Uh, these are just some, some screen grabs from my YouTube statistics just to have some kind of content up on screen. Um, and then now we'll see it's going to loop back to one, and that's beautiful. So I'm going to get rid of this audition window. Uh, we see that works. It's all great. Um, I'm just going to show this other little demo script because I built this while I was working on this. Uh, I was running this queue a lot. I was ending up with these videos and these fades that I didn't want to keep deleting. So I wrote this script that all I do is I just hit, I select everything in the queue list and I hit Control A and it deletes everything and resets me, resets my testing scripts page. Um, this is not specific to create slideshow, although this, this actual script is, but this functionality of giving yourself something to reset your testing surface, that's a do yourself a favor and do that if you if you know you're going to be modifying a lot of cues. Um, so that's how the script works. Let's jump into the code and see what's going on. Okay, so over here. <clears throat> As normally, this my, my scripts come from someone else. Uh, the original version of this was contributed to this QLab scripts and macros page by Tim Rogers. Thank you, Tim. In his original version, it was not a loop. All it did was it, it loaded the slides. It started the first slide and faded all of them out until the last slide. And when it got to the last slide, it would stop and hold. And to do that, he's got this interesting little catch. So at the very beginning, it says, if we're looking at the first slide, just make a fade in. And then for every slide after that, fade out the previous queue, fade in this queue. Um, so that's pretty neat. That's a pretty neat little workflow. Uh, we'll be using that. We'll be using that. Um, what we're also going to do is we're going to add another little section in here that deals with what happens if it's the last item. Because we've got a special case for the first item, and we've got a special case for the last item. And then most of them will do this, this routine right here in the middle. So let's jump over to the new updated script. Again, we're not going to be walking through the recoding. Um, it's, it's very similar to the recoding of the new video, make new video script. So we're just going to be doing a walkthrough of what the code does. So uh, in here, I've got my little, my little notes to me like I normally do, reminding me where things came from and giving me any advisories. In fact, I want to add an advisory to this one that says, uh, Note, select cues in order they appear in 
to this. So that may not make sense to you. That makes sense to me. So let me um, save this. Let's run back over to QLab real quick, and I'll show you what that means. So when I first ran this, I selected the first queue, and then I selected the last queue. I used the shift click to get everything. And that ran everything in perfect sequence. Everything was lined up the way we wanted. If we select from the bottom and then go to the top and run this hotkey, um, you'll see the starting queue is out of order. The starting queue down here, this one actually wants to be the, the second queue in the sequence. So that's what I mean when I say select the queues in the order they appear in the queue list. Okay, I'm just going to clean that back up and go back to the code. Okay, so that's my little notes to myself. Coming into the actual script itself, we have a couple global variables. So uh, if you haven't seen my other video where I discuss globals, uh, what a global is is it's just a variable you can use anywhere in the script. I can use it in this main body. I can use it down here in this function. I can use it down here in this function. These three places all have separate scopes, which is why they all have their own tell block. Um, so normally, this see this set my queues. This is a local variable. I couldn't use this down in the enter some text or in the make fade function. Uh, I would need to to make that a global. But uh, so what I did with my previous queue, my color, my post weight, I made those globals. My color and my post weight, we set them once and then we forget it, so I didn't want to have to keep reassigning those for every function call. Um, my previous queue, we pass around between functions, so I just wanted to make sure that didn't work. There's probably a way I could have done this with a local variable, but, but my scripting is always a little fast and dirty, so that's why I did this. Uh, moving forward, I set values for, for most of these. Uh, with the exception of my post weight, my post weight we're going to get from the user, but everything else I just make it, uh, go ahead and set the value for. Then we have the my enter some text. We're going to ask the user how long we want in between the slides and store that in a variable, the global my post weight. Then we're going to grab the selected cues and store them in a list. We're going to store the count of those selected cues so we know how many times to run the loop we're about to start. And then we're going to um, we're going to set a marker for the first item in that list so that when we get to the end and we make our start loop, our start queue to start the loop, we, we know where to target that. Um, and this is a good example of using very descriptive verb, uh, variable names. This is a long one. It's not fun to write, but we only use it twice, and it's really clear what's going on. So after we've done this little bit of setup, we'll enter our repeat block. Uh, this is like a for loop in other languages. It's a repeat with because we have a determinate number of queues that we're going to, uh, to go through. Um, for loops are good when you know how many times you want to execute something. While loops are better when you're not sure and you just want, um, so. Then we set the we grab the unique ID of the queue we're currently looking at because this repeat is going to name. It's going to name the queue we're currently on each queue. So it's going to grab the unique ID of each queue, and then it's going to move the playback position to that queue so that when we make our new fades, they're in the right place. Uh, then it's going to do this check. Um, it's going to do this check that tests if we are looking at the first item of the my queues list. I'm going to be honest. I copied this line. I think this is straight from Rich's. Uh, not Rich's, excuse me, Tim's. Yep, it's straight from Tim's. I, I have never seen this reference to each queue's contents. I've never seen that before. Normally what I would do is I would say if each queue is item one of my queues, um, but I did a little bit of testing and I found that this method was a little more robust and, and honestly, I couldn't figure out why. It just works better. So even though I don't fully understand what's going on, I'm going to keep using it because I know what it does is it grabs the first item. So if it grabs the first item, like we said when we did the walkthrough on TemScript, we're just going to make the fade in. Then the next thing it does is it checks to see if we're looking at the last item because that's our other edge case. I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about that at the end of the loop. So if it's not the first item and it's not the last item, then we go through and again, like Rich's thing, or excuse me, Tim's, Tim, Tim, again, like Tim's script, we're going to fade out the queue from before and fade in the queue that we're currently on. 
And we'll, we'll repeat that for however many cues we have highlighted until we get to the last one. And the last one gets a special instruction because you'll recall that when we're on the current queue, when we're on each queue, um, when we're on each queue, we don't actually have it set to fade out each queue. That happens on the next iteration of the loop. So when we get to the last one, we need to do our fade out of the previous queue, our fade in of our current queue, and then we need to run one more fade out. And now this still says my previous queue because down here in in the definition of make fade, we change the tar we change the target of my previous queue. Um, that's why this is a global so that we can call it down here in this function definition, and then we can also call it up here in the main body. So that will make the fade out of the previous iterations last queue, excuse me, the previous iterations queue. It'll make the fade in for the last queue, and then it will make the fade out for the last queue. So at this point, we have all of our queues fading in and fading out in sequence. Um, so we will, oh, excuse me, I, 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 before, before I say that, um, at the end of every loop, we apply the properties of the, the, so each queue is the video queue. So what we do is we make it purple, we set its opacity to zero, and we set its continue mode to auto continue. So uh, I do this after, instead of at the beginning like Tim did, because in the make fade queue, we grab the opacity from the target queue. Now, generally speaking, if you're making a slideshow like this, you're probably going to be bringing everything up to 100%, but I wanted to give myself the option to not default to 100. So now what I can do is I can, I can load in my video slides, I can go in and change some opacities, maybe take some down to 90 or 50 or whatever, and then I can run the script, and I'm not going to overwrite those opacities. Those opacities will be transferred to the fade in. Um, I think that's just a little more future proof. Uh, so, so we'll do. Uh, excuse me. So we'll do those things at the end of the loop. On we're going through touching each queue, and we'll decrement the my count so that we because we know we work with one queue each time. One of the video queues. Remember, my count is tracking how many video queues we originally selected when we ran the hotkey. It's not counting the total number of queues that have been created during the hotkey. It's, it's how many video queues. So then when we get to the end of this repeat, once we've made all the fade ins and fade outs for every queue, what we do is we make a start queue. We make a start queue um, that is, again, it's purple and it's targeted to loop start target. And this actually, I can delete this line. So we give it the queue target. Uh, we do not have a continue mode on the loop start because that's how we let the QLab know that this is the end of our loop. And so that'll do it. Um, I'm just going to, since I didn't talk about it too much, I'm going to talk through the make fade queue. Um, if you've seen the new slide or new video, video, then you've already mostly seen this, but let's go ahead and go through it all anyway. Um, we're going to go through enter some text as well. So really briefly, because I've explained this in a couple videos, enter some text just prompts the user for text. It's bulletproof. Use it. Um, the prompt, when you, when you call enter some text up here, the prompt is the question you're asking. The default answer is what you want to pre-populate the field with. And then empty allowed is whether or not the user can turn, return a blank answer. So that's what these three things are right here. This just this just does some error checking, and this formats the form. Uh, if you want that in more detail, there's actually a whole video on enter subtext. So uh, moving on to make fade, what we have here is tell application QLab4, make a new type of queue fade, set the set the variable fade queue to that new fade I just made, apply some properties to the fade queue. So these properties are properties that are going to be the same, whether it is a fade in or a fade out. Um, so then one of our parameters for make fade is the fade type. If fade type is in, then we're going to set the opacity to the opacity of the target queue. That's what I was just talking about with the not defaulting to 100. 
we're going to set the post weight to my post weight. And then we're going to set my previous queue to the target queue so that when we come to the next iteration and we make the fade out queue, we will fade out the queue that we're fading in in this iteration. Um, I'm hoping that if I keep saying that, it will make sense combined with the way you know the script works visually. It is, it is kind of an odd phrasing, admittedly, until you're used to dealing with loops and iteration. So then if fade type is not in, so um, this is something I just want to mention up here. I've always explicitly said out because I'm telling me, the programmer, that I'm making an out queue. However, technically, the way the code is written, we don't actually need to explicitly define that. If we put anything in that argument spot that wasn't in the string in, it would create this fade out because we just have an else. Um, that's not hugely important. I just want you to know because it's a computer science thing that I don't want you to think I'm ignoring. So if we're not doing a fade in, then we need to do the set stop target when done. And we want to set the opacity to zero. And that's all we do for fade outs. Fade outs are easy. And, and that's all we do for this, for this function. Um, so this, this will function essentially in the same manner as as the um, as the old one, the only thing that's different is it's gonna it's gonna generate the cues in a slightly different order instead of doing the. Uh, let me just run the old one once real quick. We see in the old one it does. Um, actually, yes, in the old one it fades in the next video and then it stops. We're going to split this so that it, it, it fades out and stops. It doesn't matter. These, these actions happen simultaneously. It would just, in programming the make fade function, it was easier at the time for my brain to stick the pre weight, the post weight onto the, the fade, fade in, not the fade out. This is the old slideshow. Let me clear this up. So. So that's the only thing that's going to change is just the order of the fades. But again, they execute simultaneously, so it, it doesn't actually change anything. So let's go ahead and run our new create slideshow, which is on Control Z. It's going to ask us for a time. We're just going to say four again. And we see it's exactly the same. The only thing that's different is that it fade and stop test one before it fade in step two. But um, again, they are. These, these two actions are happening simultaneously. So even though they are technically in a different order, functionally it's exactly the same as the original slideshow. And again, just because I'm really happy with how this one turned out, this little reset script works wonderfully, and now we're ready to run another test. Um, like with the make new video, make new video video, a good next step for this queue would be to make a create video loop where you did take into account the durations and added uh, pre and post weights based on how long the duration of the video was. Um, I do not do that often. I do make a lot of, of photo slideshows, so that's why I have this one in my template. Uh, but it shouldn't, I, I have built that other one. It's not a huge amount of recoding, but there are some interesting challenges. And if you're feeling confident at this point, I, I recommend you give it a go. Um, I think that's going to be all for today. This is, again, this is my biggest time saver. Um, almost every live event that's, you know, it's an event, it's a nightly event. It's not an actual show show. Almost every time I do that, there's a, there's a pre-show pre-show thing that has coming attractions with posters for the coming events. And, you know, every night that's 10 to 20 minutes making a slideshow that I can pop out in 30 seconds. So I, I really, when I say this is my biggest time saver, it saves me hours all the time. So um, again, that's it. That's all for today. You will find everything on my GitHub shortly. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Have a good one, y'all.